to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it, we have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to A Well-Designed Business. Barry Lance of Indiana-based A. Lance Design and Consulting is with us today, and I am very delighted to share with you his story of how he started out in his 20s selling high-end furniture and how he eventually moved on to create his own interior design firm. And then Barry will continue and tell us more about how after decades of running his full-service design business and retail shop, he then ultimately handed the reins over to his daughter, Amanda, and he is turning his focus to his resurrecting his latent artistic talent for original art and now building that second business, Barry Lance Art. So today, listen in as Barry has great advice for you if you are just getting started in your design career and he gives some great reminders to those of us who have been in business a minute or two, (laughs) okay? So I want you to sit tight and, you know, pay attention as Barry walks us through how he transitioned from a well-regarded luxury full-service designer to his encore career as a successful artist. Hi, Barry. Thanks so much for joining me on A Well-Designed Business today. Oh, what a privilege to be with you, Luann. This is going to be wonderful. It is. You know, Barry, I, you know, it's funny because I feel privileged. I am... I I love every conversation I've had on this show in these five and a half years at this point, but I have a particular fondness for the episodes when I'm talking to a colleague like yourself that's been in business more than 40 years. Um, You're almost approaching 50 years. It's hard to believe because, you know, there's, it's like, you're like me. We started when we were 10, right? (laughs) We did when we were 10 and I I can't believe it has been that long, but you know what I call it, uh, Luann, is seasoned. That's right. We're just so seasoned. We are, right? right, Mm -hmm. To a perfection, to perfection, right? (laughs) (laughs) Right. But what I've learned is when I've had this um, opportunity to speak with other entrepreneurs that are, you know, 30, 40, 50 years in business, um, that so much comes out of it. And what's so funny is I, I have often when I have an interview, not often, every time when I have an interview, I have the, the through line of what I want to bring out of that person by doing my research on you. And I'm like, oh, this is what we're going to talk about. And then I always talk to mm-hmm. the guest on off air beforehand. This is my idea. Are you good with it? Plus, you have to fill out a whole form to get on and I see what your ideas are. But what I've learned is it's silly to do that with a seasoned professional because often you'll say one thing and my curiosity will go running right down another road. So I'm not prepared with 15,000 questions on this one. I'm looking forward to really pulling apart and understanding your career because between interior design, your art, your, you know, your website, barrylanceart.com is beyond like the actual art that you create. Oh, and thank you. It is. It's just absolutely amazing. And then of course you have the cloth to canvas collection with Kravitz. So there's three huge areas here where you have truly excelled. And um, so I'm going to ask you a question that I almost never ask anybody because I really, it just, it doesn't usually inform where we want to go, but today it does. Tell oh, I me, can't wait. I, I can't know. wait to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, take me back to when you started as an interior designer. What were you thinking? Was it an intentional decision? Was it something where one thing led to another and the next thing you know, you were doing design and decoration for friends and family? What What was that about? 
Okay, well, that that is a very good question. And it really is the basis for my entire career. Because there's been a lot of circling around and coming back to certain things uh, within my career. And at the age of um, 18, 19, I decided that I wanted to teach art um, on a um, college level or at least high school. So that was what I was going to do because I was very active in art. And like some students, as they go to school, they get mononucleosis. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so in my first year in college, I could not finish because I really did have that mm. and it became ill. So by not finishing, I thought, okay, I need to take part-time job until next year so I can go back. And um, I grew up in Indiana and there was this fabulous uh, furniture store close to where I lived. Very, very high end. So high end, it makes, uh, makes it almost seem impossible for that time. This was 1973, four. Mm. So I took a part-time job there, uh, working on the floor and selling these gorgeous, gorgeous sofas and chairs and lighting and accessories. And, and I thought, my God, I'm, I'm really good at this. I can sell. Well, mm. I grew up in a family-owned grocery store and uh, tracking back a bit and sold things in the store all the time. So, but anyway, so I kept selling all these beautiful things for the home. And then the owner said, I think you could go out to a house and make a house call and help people with their design. And I said, well, I know I could. I said, let's do that. So, you know, within six months of that uh, job in this lovely furniture store, I was making house calls and began uh, building a clientele very, very quickly uh, within the area in Indiana. So um, that's where it all kind of started. I did not finish college. I, I stuck with the furniture, um, the furniture store and worked my way into a lot of design projects all over Indiana within the first couple of years. And I thought, I like this. Mm -hmm. This is really challenging. It's very creative. And I'm going to stick with this for a while and maybe go back to school, I don't know, in two years and then teach <laughs> art. Well, didn't happen. I just no, became, I really did become in demand in the area and I built a very fine reputation early on in my career. So that comes to where we are now. Um, uh huh. Isn't that something? And so the thing about it is, is, you know, it's funny because um, when you describe that and the success that you were having, my question in there is, how many years did you stay at the furniture store until you turned around and said, I, I, I'm going to go out on my own and do this? Was it um, your impetus to do that? Was it a client who looked at you and said, open your own place? Like, how did that happen? No, I, I, I decided all of my family, um, we've all been in retail, everything from grocery stores, shoe stores, dress shops, men's clothing, drug stores. Um, we've all been in retail. And so uh, mentoring, um, you know, or, or thinking about those people who mentored me to, and they'd say, you should just open your own. You should just open your own. And I've always been pretty much a one man show with whatever I've done in mm -hmm. life. So I thought, okay, um, yeah, I want I, I'm going to do this myself because I knew that it would be more lucrative financially. And I had an early, um, early in life longing to be famous because I wanted to be an actor. <laughs> Most designers, I will tell you, I think are frustrated movie stars. <laughs> so um, I thought I got to get on my own if I'm going to do this. So um, I went on my own, oh, I think about eight years mm. into that. And um, yeah, did my one man traveling show for design. That's right. It's so good. And so what I love is, what's funny is, I love to hear that you spent the eight years because there's a lot to learn, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. you're doing this career that you didn't intend to do. Of course, you have a major affinity for it. Um, and what I also think is interesting to point out is it wasn't necessarily the affinity for being able to match the sofa with the rug that was the impetus for the success. It was the ability to sell something to somebody, to help them visualize and be asked Aspirational, aspirational about the way their home should be. Do you agree? Yes. 
Oh, definitely agree. I think if you can't sell something, it's very hard uh, to make a living. And you have to start with selling yourself. Mm -hmm. I've always been able to sell myself even as a young child. Um, You know, you just turn on the charm and uh, get up in church and you sing the solo and, (laughs) (laughs) you know, all those early on things about selling yourself are so important. So um, I've always sold myself and in art or in design or in uh, character and personality, uh, uh, branding, you know, that's that's the whole part of it is is selling. And for me, selling is the rush. Mm. It's not even the creativity, I don't think, as much for me. I just love to sell. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you're talking my language now, man. I have to yeah. Tell you. <laughs> yep. 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 I agree. And I hear it. I, I have the same feeling when I'm able to find a right solution for someone and then able to, you know, create the vision of it that they feel the same thing. And they're like, yes, I want that. I'm like, yes, we are good. Yes. This is fun. Yeah. <laughs> you got to romance it. You got to be able to describe it. You have to present it. I think, Uh, Two of the biggest words, I think, uh, for people to be successful in design would be selling and presentation. Mm. You know, I could, my mother used to say, I could sell a boat with a hole in it. Uh, (laughs) And she could. Uh, She had a lovely clothing store and very successful. And, but if you couldn't sell the goods, uh, it doesn't matter what the goods are. Right, right. So, yeah, exactly. So I'm going to jump all the way ahead. I'm going to come okay. back because I want to okay. know some more about this, you know, the getting this business off the ground and all uh-huh. of your career, having the design firm and then leading into the artwork and so forth. But uh-huh. I know a, a, the, the, a little bit of a story that I think fits perfectly here. I okay. remember when we did the event for Kravit together and we had that great conversation about your new collection, Canvas to Cloth. Mm-hmm. You told me about the pitch to Kravit. So mm-hmm. that could be that to me is tying right into that being able to sell yourself and the presentation. I feel like I remember the remnants of a story there uh-huh, where you uh-huh. went very creative in that. Would you tell we us sure that story? <laughs> well, we sure did. That was like um, for me and my affinity for musical theater, putting on a one man Broadway show. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I had approached Kravit um, about a collection and Kravit uh, to preface Uh, was my choice to go to and pitch the idea because I have sold uh, Kravit fabrics and furniture and and carpets um, my entire career. And I just love their product. It's our first go-to. It always has been. And over the years, I have built a good good reputation and friendship with uh, several of the Kravit family, you know. So... um, I said to one of the people, I said, I really think I could come up with a collection that would be really strong for you. So they, you know, they, they're very cautious about, you know, not wasting their time, but spending time uh, talking to someone like me that wants a collection of fabric. And they were very kind. They got back to me. They said, yes, let's do that. Why don't you put a few things together and um, come to New York and uh, Scott Kravit will be there and part of the team. And um, you can show us show us what you got, you know. So um, being the extraordinary uh, presenter that I feel like I am, <laughs> um, Amanda, my daughter, who we'll talk about here in a little bit, mm. uh, put together a gorgeous color-coordinated presentation consisting of a truckload of my art um, big canvas paintings. I think we took like 15, wow. uh, big 48, 48s and larger. And then of course, a few smaller, uh, studies, um, showing all the colors and then books of the patterns and how many colorways. And it was really very, very thorough wow. and completely color coordinated in one of the colors at the time. Um, that was really incoming into the interior design field, purple. Mm. Okay, Amanda even bought the right dress. I bought the right suit, the right tie, the right (laughs) scarf, the shoes, um, everything in purples and lavenders with a little bit of green. So we set up 
um, several hours before in the big uh, conference boardroom at Kravit um, in New York and lined the room with the accessories and the artwork and the layout and the papers and all that stuff. And, and we're dressed all, you know, in this kaleidoscope of uh, lavenders and purples and, and greens and the Kravit people come in and they sit down and purple, 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 you know, they're saying, oh my gosh, you know, well, I come to find out within 10 minutes of the audition, as I like to call it, that Scott Kravit, who is in charge of all textiles, his least favorite color <laughs> is guess what? Purple. <laughs> <laughs> and there is very, very little purple included in in the Kravit textile line. Oh he just never liked it. He didn't put it in the in anybody's collection. He's always <laughs> steered away from it. <laughs> so there we are singing and dancing in purple. And I find that out. So that was a sweaty moment, you know. <laughs> and I thought, oh my God, you know, I, I think purple's going to be really big. And by the way, it did become a huge, you know, color trend there for a while. Mm -hmm. and, and it still is purples yeah. and lavenders. So um, that was the funny thing about that presentation. A lot of the things that they ended up liking and, uh, and using were recolored. Mm -hmm. But Scott Kravit, um, is, is such a great guy. I like him so much. He did put in a couple lavender pieces in my collection um, because I pleaded with him to do so. <laughs> so he was a really good sport. And after a while, after the audition, Amanda and I, um, we went to Hermes and bought him a beautiful purple tie and had it <laughs> sent over. <laughs> so, and we still laugh about that uh, because it was, um, had I known that he didn't really like purple, of course, I would never have uh, have presented <laughs> in that color, but it worked out. It worked out just fine. Well, I mean, and that's a testament to Scott, right? I mean, he's got yes. a wonderful eye for, for oh. color pattern texture, and he could, yes. you know, divorce himself for a second of the colorway mm -hmm. that was like burning the retina, right? <laughs> right, right. Well, and it was funny. We, he, he made comments like, well, I don't see this in fabric. I don't see this in fabric. This is art. This is in fabric. And mm. I'm thinking, wait a minute, mister. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, I made, you know, I made, I didn't make him listen, but he was so kind and, and uh, gave me a chance to explain. So it, it, it all worked out beautifully. So um, it's so it's I love that story. And, it, you know, I said to you when I met you the first time for the event that it reminded me mm -hmm. of the Mabley Handler story, the way they set mm -hmm. the whole thing up in the conference room as a beach mm -hmm. scene because they mm -hmm. were pitching their uh, collection that there that was suitable for the Hamptons and the Hampton lifestyle. And so, yes. forth. yeah. Um, and I just think it's interesting because. I, I, you know, I always bring these little stories out when I hear about them because we know lots of the designers in our audience are one day, you know, wondering maybe somebody right now is getting ready to pitch somebody or as, aspires to pitch something one day. And it, I have to tell you, for me, it not, it not, it never would have occurred to me to go to that extreme. I would, if somebody on my team said, we're going to cart 15, 48 by 48 pieces of my art up, you know, into New York City, up mm -hmm. the elevator, set it up in a thing. Mm -hmm. I would have mm -hmm. said, you're out of your mind. If they say no, we're going to be setting up and bringing this down for five hours for a 10-minute conversation. Right. But right. I love but, you that know, you I, do it, and it's a nice well, lesson, I, I think. I think it made all the difference. I mean, yes. it made the pre presentation a lot more interesting. And Amanda and I do that very same thing with all of our clients. Mm. When we present a whole house or or even several rooms to a client, we lay it out here in our uh, beautiful um, office selling space in that way. I mean, we pull the lamps, we pull the table setting, we pull all those kinds of things together with the fabrics, with the carpet, with the paint to show them a whole story. And we dress in the colors um, of the house that we're presenting. Yeah. We just think it it just tells it tells much more of a story that way and it's easier for the client to envision 
Interesting. So your practice in your firm, when you have a major presentation, is not to do digital mood boards or even, you know, tactile mood boards. You literally bring in live elements of the component. So if I would be looking at a mood board that would have a sofa on it, a lamp on it, a mirror on it, you know, um, some accessories, whatever can be carried in, you're going to carry in. And then maybe you'll have the fabrics of the sofa and and a a square of the rug or corner of the rug. Oh yeah. And we order big memo samples of everything. And even if we need a yard to really make the presentation sing and make the client understand how important the fabric is, we order that ahead of time. We have two wonderful big pinup boards. Um, it's not Pinterest like everybody or everybody <laughs> does. I don't do that. I've never been on Pinterest. <laughs> Our Pinterest is is two huge pinup boards of actual touchable, feelable, three dimensional items. All the fabrics, all the trim, um, and then. If we don't have the piece, say it's a chair, if we don't have that chair in our showroom, then, of course, that goes on, you know, a big uh, television screen where they can see the piece and Mm -hmm. then relate it to the three dimensional items. Sometimes we have four tables, 48 by 48 of nothing but accessories, throw pillows, rugs and all that stuff to enhance the textiles that are usually the only way to show them is in a flat square piece, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. So it all becomes more lively. Uh, we put greenery with it. We put fresh flowers with it. I mean, it's all, it's like a vignette. And again, that theater part of me, it's uh, setting the stage or the set, you know? So what I'm understanding, what I'm hearing then is you have, do you, is it a retail store that you and Amanda have, Barry, as well? Or is it yes. really? Okay. Okay. So that puts you at a little bit of an advantage over because the rest of us were like, what? <laughs> yeah. Well, where do they go to get all that? Right, right, now, right. we moved to this location. Um, we have been in this location three years in October. And before that, we had a lovely studio slash office this is a combination now of a frontage that is probably i don't know 40 feet deep and i don't know 25 feet wide on the street with big windows so it's a lovely fishbowl and people can look in and see the shop the shop is full of accessories art lighting and furniture that maybe we purchased with in mind for a client or a project we're working on or people can come in just to shop in there then the next section is our huge design research studio then behind that is my art studio so everything is under one roof now Mm. and and it, it just it works itself so well for that so while we carry a lot of what I like to call our glorified storage room, which is our shop out to client projects. A lot of people come in and shop and they may not be using our design services. You see. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's, and, and I know that now here's, we're going to pop all back and forth your life, things I know and things I want to show to the audience and things that uh-huh. you'll reveal to both of us at the same time. Right. But so right. I know that it, in the recent years, Amanda has bought you out of your design studio and now you work for Amanda. And yes. so is is it that she in other words is it run as two separate businesses the retail separate from the design or is it from a business entity all under one house and amanda is the owner of it no our um amanda owns the companies the three companies or the three facets is a lance design our handle is lance collective but I should say under Lance Collective or that umbrella, as I call it, because I'm older than most people, I like to think of Lance Collective as an umbrella, which encompasses our shop, our retail shop, our design company, and then the Barry Lance Art, which is the separate company from the other two, if mm-hmm. that answers your question. Yep. And and um, so, yes, I, I work for Amanda now, and I have, um, I think it's going on six maybe six years or seven years. And it's been just wonderful. And how fortunate am I to have, you know, um, raised this glorious daughter of mine and, and she wanted to do um, what I do. Now Mm -hmm. she didn't in college, 
she went into um, public relations and marketing. But I mean, she's using that, you know, mm -hmm. in, in this business. But she grew up in design. I think by example, she just um, watched and learned and took in. Listen, Amanda used to go to the Merchandise Mart with me as a fun trip. She loved mm. going at even 12 years old. And I would say, okay, we're going into the Kravitz showroom. And Amanda, I want you to help me find an orange and green floral print. <laughs> by gosh, she'd go over to those wings and and she'd pull them out and write them down. And and so she, you know, she just loved going to Chicago with me and I'd go to work with clients and, and buying trips. And she loved doing that. So it was always within her mm -hmm. to do that. And um, so when she came to work for me after doing a few other things after college, she went to Butler um, University in Indianapolis. Um we worked together on a lot of projects and she, I thought, my God, she's better than I am. I wow. thought at her age, I, I'm not sure I would have been able to do that or come up with that idea. And so she really is a mini me, but much better Aww. is what, is what I call her. And we just have a ball uh, working together. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's amazing. And I've had the luxury of, you know, we've, being with the two of you together and her regard mm -hmm. for you is as high. And that's what's so fun about it. Um, yeah. You know, that she feels, you know, I know that she feels exactly the same. Um, so, okay. So what do we think? Where, where do we want to go with this now, Barry? So I, when I think about all the different things that I might find a nugget from you about a lesson that we could take, I feel like there could be a lesson in succession planning, in actually having a, one of your children come into the business and having them work for you and then that uh -huh. turning the baton at something. How about um, I also feel like we could get off on talking about what was it like when you actually went from working for someone else after eight years and then now your name's on the door and what were your hard lessons that maybe took you by surprise. Mm -hmm. um, I could also think about this stage of your life now where Amanda really is, you know, the one, I, you know, from our conversation off air, you know, doing a lot of the running of the business and all the things and it's allowed you time to put more time into designing a fabric collection and your artwork. So where would you right. like to take the conversation? Well, I think when I've listened to you before, um, your show before, which, by the way, is ju it's just always so wonderful. And I always learn something. Thank you. Um, I think it's nice if people are listening to this that um, maybe they can go away thinking, wow, I didn't think about that. But um, for me as a young designer, perhaps they might think, God, I'm glad he said that. That really makes me think about it. So why don't we start there? And I have, I have a few um, ideas for people. And, you know, know, uh, frequently people in my area here in Carmel, Indiana, they will call or they'll ask, you know, could I shadow you? Or I have a few questions. I think I want to be a designer. What do you think? And yada, yada, yada. So one of the first things I, I tell everybody is um, if you want to be a successful designer, go to retail. Mm -hmm. You have to go sell something. I said, I would always say, I don't care whether it's cosmetics, men's suiting, um, um, in food service, whatever you do, you have to go to retail and you have to be sure that you have the patience and the agility and the personality to communicate with people and make sure that you like it first, because this is a people business. Mm. This is getting into everybody's personal stuff, you know, when you're designing their home spaces and offices. Um, but ideally go to a furniture store and I don't care what price range furniture you sell let's see if you can sell it you know it's like going on qvc and you're going to sell a pencil for 15 minutes okay <laughs> let me see you do that so I, I always i always tell these young people coming up or wanting to do this um this uh you know um profession to to go work in a store and learn as much as you can not just about um, selling, but then also the product and, you know, how it's built and the, you know, you just, you got to get out there and you've got to experience some things. Um, then I always tell everybody, and this is something that it took me a very long time to come to terms with. I have never been uh, a person to delegate. So I've always said, and I think I said earlier, um, 
yeah, I'm a one man show. Mm. I always wanted to be the star of the theater. Or I always wanted to, I wanted to be the one person. Okay. Now having always wanting to do that, I did waste or not waste, but I spent a lot of time doing things that I shouldn't have been doing. Mm. I should have let somebody else do that in a support way so that I could be more successful with the selling and, and getting out there and doing so. But, you know, I insisted on running the library. I wanted it done a certain way and, and so forth. Um, so I, I, it's always real important to be able to delegate um, work and um, and uh, responsibilities to others. Those are the two things I always tell people about design. And, uh, you know, young people, um, it's interesting. They think that the profession of interior design is really a foo-foo, luxurious, uh, glamorous uh, type thing. It, it can be, but it certainly is not always. I mean, <laughs> right. as you as you know, Loanne, I mean, we work really hard and um, lots of hours, especially if you own your own business and you hang pictures and you move furniture and you lay rugs and you, you know, there's a lot of labor involved in it too. So, um to get that experience early on is really good. Well, I love both of these suggestions. And, you know, the first one for working in retail, it's funny because, you know, we have had designers over the years suggest the same thing or express how they came up working for, through uh, different furniture stores and how that impacted their ability to just, you know, like you said, understand the quality and the construction and understand the supply chain and understand, you know, when you're now dealing with a vendor and they're telling you X, Y, Z, and you're like, sort of, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I know that it doesn't work that way, right? right. Or right. when somebody wants to compare the quality of a Kravitz sofa to some sofa that they can get on the highway. When you know the difference and what creates that quality when somebody like Kravit makes it as opposed to the throwaway furniture that is, you know, so often the alternative, it makes mm -hmm. it much easier for you to stand behind your conviction of this is what I'm presenting to you. And this is you need this because right. this is worthwhile. Right. It is. And if you don't have confidence in yourself and your self personality, I don't mean confidence necessarily in the field of design if you can't show the potential client that you're confident in yourself and the way you're expressing things especially with design you can't sell it and you cannot be successful so you have to be able to be confident in uh, speak up I, my, my mother used to say walk like you know where you're going i um, love you know, that line you know, it, be intentional about about your presentation, be intentional and don't say, well, I think um, green would be a good color. No, no, no. And I've said from my early career, I never think anything. And I have never said that to a client. You never say, I think, I think that'd be nice. No, you don't think you say that would be nice. Right. Do you see the difference? Yes. So you have to, you sort of have to not, I don't mean take over everything, but you have to exude confidence when you're selling a whole house full of things and ideas and make that client understand and feel that you're confident with what you're doing mm -hmm. and, and you're not thinking about it. Well, and that is such a great little lesson in there, you know, because it's true. I can ask my girlfriend what she thinks and get a wishy-washy answer. But if I've hired you as my t interior designer, it really doesn't matter if you like it or you don't like it. I've hired you for your opinion. Have one right? Mm -hmm. Have one. <laughs> Have one or I'm going to throw you mine and ruin everything. So. <laughs> There's that. Right, That's right, the right, right, right. So you know the result of when you don't have the courage of your convictions, right? True. <laughs> That's yes. right. Yeah. And then, of course, the second lesson of, of being able to delegate. And, you know, it's so funny that um, that that was a harder lesson for you to master, knowing that, you know, as the leading actor in a, a movie, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. need your supporting people. Right. Yes, it's like you really do. But it's sort of like, I don't know. I'm a very type A personality. Mm -hmm. I'm very, very, very organized. I don't feel that there's anything wrong with that. I don't think that I'm kind of half nuts as people think because I'm, <laughs> you know, over the top with no junk drawer and I paint 
on canvas in good clothes. I don't use a drop cloth. I clean up everything before I go to bed. I mean, I just work and I function better that way. So if you're kind of that way, I think that one uh, tends to just want to control everything. Mm. And I think you asked a little earlier about, you know, how's that work with Amanda and, and kind of giving up some of that when she bought the business. And I've had to, um, okay, I guess there really is more than one way to do something, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, and, and work in the way that she works. She has her own, you know, um, procedure or path when she's designing something for someone. It's not like mine. Um, I'm never going to admit it's the same or, or it's as good as mine, <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, I see where she goes with it and everything. But um, yeah, you've got to not only delegate your process, to yourself a little bit more too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we cannot go by that little thing that you said in there that you paint in good clothes and you don't use a drop cloth. No, I don't. That's I do not. That's I have a little a, crazy pants, Barry. Got to say, I, I, it's it's a little bit that way. Um, <laughs> I keep referring to my mother, who I I just feel like she's here right now. She would so love to hear this. Um, and she passed away several years ago, but oh my gosh, um, had such marvelous influence on my life. Um, my mother used to love to paint her house interior mm. and they would change it up, oh, you know, every few years. And my mother uh, was English and she always painted, as she would say, in her pearls. She always had good clothes on and painted. She never got anything on her ever. Um, so, yeah, I in my um, studio slash design office that I have here as part of the uh, a part of the business, I have it all set up and my gosh, everything's organized. And I, I don't usually I get paint on my hands. I won't you know, won't lie about that, but I very seldom, and I've never put down a drop cloth. I, I, I just, I don't work that way. That's so crazy. yeah, that's true. I, I usually have clothes that I'm working on uh, or working in during the day for seeing clients. And then I'll just go back and paint whenever I get to it. That's amazing. And I have mm -hmm. to say, you know why it's amazing? Not because I don't think it's possible, right? Of course. What I, what it's amazing is, is that, we so often associate the creative mind and brain with that little bit of, you know, artsy chaos that, right? right? right. And to and you're not even middle of the road on it. I mean, I actually no. am a painter in our house too, not not creative paint, but painting the walls, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. And uh -huh. it's the same thing. I don't, now, if I'm going to, you know, I'm going to tell you, if I'm going to be doing painting walls with a ruler, I'm going to put some drop cloths down, but I'm not covering the space. I, I'm, I'm the same as you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it neatly. If I'm doing mm -hmm. trim and all of that, I just do it. I, I might have mm -hmm. a wet rag next to me if something does drip and I don't oh, notice sure. it, right? Yeah, but right. but I I don't think that's the same like when I when I imagine the creativity that it takes to create the artwork that you do and the, it takes to create the designs that you have created over the years. I I have to say I saw your website, you're redoing it now. And mm -hmm. I saw it when it was live before. Hopefully by the time the show airs, it'll be live again. Um, mm -hmm. The work is exquisite. And so I guess what I'm trying to say is I think of myself as somewhat of an organized, you know, person in that way. But I also don't think of myself as nearly as creative as you. So it's crazy that you are off the chart creativity and off the chart organization. Yeah, and those two, um, yeah, those two um, traits are kind of unless it's just all a stereotype, uh, stereotyped uh, you know, way of thinking that creative people are messy and, and mm. um, unorganized and all that. Maybe it's not, maybe that isn't true. Maybe um, more artistic people are a lot more, um, you know, going by procedure and organized mm -hmm. than we think. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. what do you think? I, I, I think it's possible. I, I do <laughs> you know? too. And I think, you know, what's funny about it is, is I think that probably a lot of the designers listening are saying, yes, I'm really creative, but I'm organized. I think you're right. I think it's more than we think. But mm -hmm. I also do think you know, you've mentioned many times the influence of your mom and you hear her words in your head. And mm -hmm. I do think that it comes from environment also. So you have this creativity in you, but there's an ideal. I just had a conversation with my own daughter literally an hour before our interview, and she mm -hmm. was describing 
now at 32, almost 33 years old, her reflections on my influence on her. Oh, how interesting. Yes, it was a kind of heavy conversation. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> you know, right. and it was a cool conversation. And and so you you know, you you know, it would be interesting. One day I'll have to get Amanda on the show and then have her tell about the things that she's heard you say through the years that oh, the way she yes. grew up with the perspective of being in the business, quote unquote, as a child, right? And then leaving right. and then coming back and now being the boss. It'd be interesting, right? Because oh, we it's are she- so there's a lot of interesting stories about that. One that she loves to tell was um, Amanda always had a lovely bedroom growing up. And, you know, she, she got to the age where, could I hang some posters? And I said, God, no. <laughs> are, who, who do you, whose daughters do you think you are? There will be no posters, but I will get you a bulletin board. And I said, you can put everything on the bulletin board that you want. So for Christmas, she got the bulletin board. It was like 36 inches wide and 24 <laughs> tall. <laughs> and she said, you know, thanks a lot. I well, that didn't hurt her. You know, uh, she grew up fine without uh, posters and lights and all that stuff in her bedroom. So, I'm laughing hysterically because I had the same conversation with my kid. I'm like, what? You want to do what? This room is you gorgeous. What? You can't. <laughs> no, we're not. No. Uh-uh. <laughs> uh, and I did the same thing. What I did was I remember getting her. My, I, I, I splurged, though. I went a little bit bigger. It was okay. about 30 by 60. And oh, it was wow. one of those French, um, th- uh, what do they call them? French poster, like French oh, pin sure. boards. Where yes. they, it's, it's padded and it has the X's of all the ribbons. Cross the ribbon. Yeah. Uh-huh. And so by the time she graduated, high school there they were layers on top of layers on top of layers there was no piece of that piece uncovered of that because it was the only and I, I remember I have to say Barry when I left her when Vinny and I drove her to college and we come back that first day you know when you leave her there oh yeah and I oh. walk you know what do I do I walk up into her room and I'm sitting in her room and I looked at that French pinup board whatever the heck it's called and I thought to myself you know you're a real son of a gun Luann would it have been such a big deal if she could actually see all of the things that made she, her happy <laughs> yeah but you know what she you did just fine i'm sure and i bet she's fabulous and she could have been a real mess of a kid with all the posters and all the stuff i mean you never know right that's right we could look at it that way that's right that's right <laughs> oh that's so funny that is so funny well mm. tell me a little bit about um you know what's ahead Right. You are like on the move here. You are not slowing down. You've got Amanda running the thing. You're still designing all of the projects together with the Mm -hmm. two of you. I know you guys are Mm -hmm. doing Kips Bay in Dallas. Right. So that's coming up. We're so excited about that. Amanda is there as we speak. We have a beautiful what I think is um, to one of the two most beautiful rooms in the whole house it's Mm. it's just gorgeous so amanda had to fly it to dallas um last night to be there for something today and we have a room planned everything's on order we you know we have to get this done by the end of september um so on the horizon is that um that is most impeding along with all of our client work and we we have been very busy um um and so appreciatingly so uh, busy. And then we have been toying with the idea and we are at 99% of signing a lease in old Naples, Florida. And we're going to be opening a second location. And we're really excited about that, which we hope to get open by the end of October. Whoa. So yeah, we're, we're, we're busy. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. And what's the uh, attraction of Old Naples? Is that a place that you like to spend part of the year? Or Well, I don't spend anywhere outside of Indiana part of the year because I've always worked. And, and I do love Indiana. I mean, I have lived in Indiana my entire life, if you can believe that, mm. in three counties. I've worked all over the country. And I often thought as a young person of, of moving away, but I just never did that. And now I'm glad that I didn't. Amanda has always lived in Indiana here too. She was born here as well. So the thing about Naples, I, um, I have gone there for years since I was, I don't know, 30 probably. And then subsequently I have done lots and lots of design work in Naples because I know a lot of people there from this area Mm. who have second homes. And, um, I, we always, especially Amanda has always wanted a second location. So we looked at different areas and I said, you know, Naples is just so cool. 
and it's going through this wonderful change right now. It's sort of reinventing itself, and we know people there, so let's let's go look for a space. So mm. we found the space, and um, since we know people, we've done a lot of work there in the past. Uh, it's not like just starting over in Iceland or someplace, you right, know. Right, right. Yeah, and then the other reason for that is I'm sure that my art will um, – do very well in Florida because it has kind of that kind of a look and, and coloring. So, yeah, so we've got that going on. So we're busy, but, um, you know, by December, we should have that open. We'll have Kip Spay behind us and who knows what after that. Amazing. Amazing. Mm-hmm. It's so good. I mean, um, and, and the, the two of you on a, you know, just like a little tip type thing in the partnership, did you get it? Did you, was it necessary for the two of you to establish, look, dad, this is going to be your area. If we disagree, I'll acquiesce here. This is going to be my area. If we disagree, you'll acquiesce here. Or is it Amanda's show now? And whether you agree or not, it's sort of her show and you just say, okay, sweetie, let's go. No, it's, it's definitely her show. Mm. Now I, I certainly am very opinionated and, and will chime in or argue or fight about something, which <laughs> you know, that's, that's good. That's all good. Um, and sometimes I, I give in because I don't necessarily agree, but I love to see this girl of mine grow and do mm. what she's doing. And it's never not worked out if it was something that I didn't agree with, but no, we didn't divide up things mm. um, when she bought the business. I did know that um, I was going to step away from a lot of the, of the financial side mm-hmm. of the business, which gave me time uh, to paint. I would never have started painting if it had it not been for that and the 2008, nine recession. Um, I started painting for two reasons. Amanda was going to take over the business. I needed more time to paint. And it became clear after, um, uh, you know, sub, uh, going along and making the income come in for a luxury business during the recession was rough. Mm-hmm. And so I started painting to make more money. I mean, I'll just be honest. Wow. And I thought, I think I could sell this. So it started selling and that's turned into a whole nother business. Uh, of its own. And so by her taking over the business and taking away some of my responsibilities, it gave me time to do the painting. And then subsequently, the painting is what inspired the fabric collection. So then the fabric collection, Amanda and I did work on together. But from that has come other things that I would not have the time to do had Amanda not taken over some of the responsibilities that I had. Amazing. I love mm-hmm. it. I love how it's how it's so synergistic that, yes. you know, uh-huh. she comes into a period of her life where she's capable, has the ideas, has the confidence, has the skills to run the business at the same moment that you are ready and able to look at other activities and business avenues for yourself that right. you want to pour yourself into and you're happy to say, hey, go go do it, right? Yes, yes. Uh-huh. It really has, the timing has just been Perfect. And we all know timing is everything. Mm-hmm. So I, I wish for me that a lot of this had happened a little earlier, um, you know, in my career. But my gosh, I, I have so much energy and um, so many plans and so much to do. Um, I'll take it right now mm. at this age. Well, I mean, mm-hmm. you know, it's funny. I'll push you back on that a little bit. I feel mm-hmm. like don't you feel like, though, that you needed to be exactly who you were, all the things that happened to you at the moment to be ready to do this next thing? Yes. Right? Yeah. Don't you? All those, all those things, um, you know, you pull all those things into a bucket and stir them all around and out comes what you do at this time, yes. I think. And, uh, you know, if it didn't stir together and blend together very well, it had to sit a little bit longer. Right. So um, I think it sat long enough. And um, now we're drinking out of the bucket with all kinds of things. Mm. And I think mm. the little nudge in there, the, the difference in there is once it all does, like you said, you know, mix together and it's right, then the only thing left is to have the courage to do it, 
-hmm. right? So mm -hmm. you had to have the courage to sell the business to her. You had to have mm -hmm. the courage to lean into the art and say, I can sell these. I can make a revenue stream with mm -hmm. this, right? Because mm -hmm. we can we can sometimes regret that we didn't get something done earlier and then mess it up because we're too wallowed in, oh, it's too late for me. I'm already 50 or I'm already 60 or I'm already whatever right. I am, right? So that's, right. A, that's a negative. But it, right. we also can have the opportunity and not and then you know not really recognize that it's it's go time <laughs> like it's i go, go. Time. <laughs> no it's right i hadn't i had not painted on canvas since that um, early and quick stage of college um, oh. until 2009 10 right in there and i i would think gosh i i really should have you know, done that earlier then. I didn't have time to do that then. I was, uh, you know, raising Amanda and, and, and starting the business and everything. And now I thought, it's time now. You know, yes. little did I know, honestly, little did I know where this, um, the art would lead. I, I'm just so thrilled with its growth. I ship paintings to other designers and work with other firms all over the country. And, and um, Kravit even took 21 of my original pieces and uh, created G Clays um, with 21 pieces so that wow. if you don't want to buy the original, you could go on Kravit Curated, as many designers do, or oh, to the yeah. trade, and, and get one of my paintings that is a G-Clay for, for, you know, for less money. Not everybody wants to uh, spend um, a certain amount of money on an original piece. So mm -hmm. that that's great, too. I'm, you know, now that I got through the one audition, as I keep calling it, with um, Scott Kravitz for the fabric and it's been launched and it's well on its way and being very well received. I'm already pestering him about a wallpaper collection. So, <laughs> <laughs> and, and probably with purple. So, um, you know, there's so, there's so much more I want to do, but having Amanda now taking, um, you know, taking the helm of the business allows me to even think about it, right. you know, mm -hmm. and maybe get it all instigated. How exciting. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I really, I just literally so thrilled for both of you because um, the gift that she has to have your example all these years and the inspiration of your entrepreneurship and then also now have, I just picture you looking at her and being like, you, you can do this and her feeling that like, okay, I got this now I'm in the driver's seat. And mm -hmm. then also I imagine her looking back at you and saying, this is a pretty cool thing I'm doing for you, dad, because I've got this over here. Look at what you're doing right. over there. It's really a great, no, it's, great it's thing. Very, really self-satisfying for both of yes. us. We, we liken ourselves, And I told Alexa Hampton this, as I've become to know her, uh, you know, well, I've said, you know, Alexa, your dad was from Indiana. Um, oh, he went to DePaul. Yeah. And here I'm from Indiana, and you worked for your father. And now you have the, you have the helm of the company. This is just like me and Amanda. Wow. And, you know, and that's really cool. And, you know, in, incidentally, uh, Luann, there are several designers that came out of Indiana, like Halston. Isn't that interesting? You know, see, mm -hmm. that's news to me. You know what I mm -hmm. mean? Because like, mm -hmm. we don't, like you said, you said earlier, you were always thought at some point, you know, when you were younger, that you'd probably move out of Indiana and you were glad that you hadn't. But when mm -hmm. you were saying that, I could imagine that. Somebody that, you know, knows furniture and has style and has flair and starts to work in the design industry. As mm -hmm. a young person, I was like, of course, you're starting to think, well, should I go to New York or L.A.? Like, where am I going to go do this, right? Yeah, where where do I need to go do it? I because right. uh, I can't do it here. Well, I'm you proof can. that you can. <laughs> that you can. Yes. yes. Amazing. I love your story. We've only touched the, I, you know, the tip of the iceberg on it, but I just think it's such a, you know, a privilege for us to be able to hear someone with your experience and, you know, such a varied career and love, love, love everything about it. And it's true. I'm going to have to get Amanda on the show and get the other side of it and her perspectives coming up in the industry and learning at your knee and how she's taking it, you know, the next level now. It's going to, it's a great, great story. Thank you, yes. Barry, for sharing. Oh, well, thank you so much, Luann. I just love doing this. And as I told you, my very first podcast, how did I do? You did great. You did great. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Pretty incredible, right? I love that Barry's 
retirement means building a second business and it includes pitching Kravit, right? First of all, the um, irony is not wasted on me there. It's not lost on me. Uh, sort of built a second business and sort of got a big help from Kravit in getting it off the ground. I think it's pretty funny and coincidental and pretty darn awesome. And I have to say, I love that when Barry was at a crossroads, that he went back and revisited a passion that he put aside in his younger years. I can't say that in my younger years, I was a podcaster, but I certainly have always been a talker. I know it's a shocking revelation, isn't it? <laughs> so, um, But the thing is, he didn't just revisit being an artist and painting for fun, which would have been totally acceptable and absolutely absolutely a viable thing for anyone to do, but he turned it into a business. He's Barry Lance. So of course he wasn't going to settle for making this endeavor a hobby. All right. Think about for a minute, the kind of confidence that it takes. He hadn't touched a canvas in dozens of years and he gets back to pursuing his art and he pitches Kravit right off the bat. This is the kind of confidence that it takes to run a business. And Barry is about the confidence. He learned in his younger years, honed his skill, whether, you know, through the years at selling furniture, all of the places and the travels he did, all of the experiences, right, have to do this. So if you are starting out now, gather your experiences and recognize and acknowledge them that you've just gained a skill set. If you just successfully had a hard conversation with a client and you feel like, you know, the both of you came out of the other side as a win-win, take a second. Like I did that. That was hard to do. And I did that because when you take it apart and you think about what was it that you said that created, you know, the conversation to be able to keep moving forward and become the win-win, then you can duplicate it the next time. So wherever your successes come, just take the time to acknowledge them, understand them so that you can repeat them because this is how you build your confidence. That is exactly where the confidence comes. And you know what Barry said? He said that clients aren't hiring you for wishy-washy. They're not hiring you for, I don't know, what do you think? They want you to know. And he said, I don't think I've ever said, I think this to a client. I know this. So whether it's picking the right furniture, whether it's doing whatever, you have to gather all of your experiences so that you can know things. All right. Because when you tell your client, you know, you better darn well know, right? So whether you are presenting fabrics and wall coverings, you can't secretly be worried if they're worth the price tag that you see on there. You can't be not sold yourself. You can't be worried or not know. You can't not know if they'll hold up for the application that you're presenting them for, okay? And I have to say, this is why so many of us, me included, go with Kravit right? If when, when we order a Kravit at Window Works, we're never worried about the quality. We can always confidently say, this is going to be amazing. And I never, and Kimberly never, we never second guess that what we're presenting when we're presenting Kravit, that it's worth it. So if you have yet to open up your trade account at Kravit, I suggest that you do that today. Go to Kravit.com and keep in mind that you can get 10% off any one purchase of Kravit fabric, wallpaper, or trim by using the code AWDB10 at checkout. All right. And I'll also say if you happen to be going to High Point this fall, October 2021, stop in the Kravit showroom. Their showroom is one of the most beautiful showrooms there. And you'll get to see the canvas to cloth collection. Maybe you'll be lucky enough to meet Barry. And you'll definitely meet the Kravit team there. And when you do meet the Kravit team, take a moment to tell them how much you appreciate their support in bringing this podcast to you. All right. And other, if you are going to High Point, I'm, don't forget, I'm having Luann Nigara meet and greet on Thursday, October 14th. And you are invited as our guest, as the guest of myself and Revel Woods. So um, the information for that is in the show notes. Now back to Barry. 
So here he is. He's in college. He gets sick. He has to drop out. Okay. But then he makes it big in interior design and art. And he's, as he sees it, it's due to the influence of key family members, but also that eight-year career in working in retail. And what is it about retail that prepares you for owning your own design business? Well, as Barry tells it, it's great practice in working with people. It's learning how to do the chit chat, but to keep the conversation going. It's learning how to balance the right amount of conversation about, you know, their dog or whatever it is, but about the furniture and the selections and the things that you want to do, right? So the question is, are you willing to hone your people skills? Are you willing to improve your selling skills? All right, because I know that you don't have to go in knowing these things. You definitely don't. I don't care if you're 20 years old or 40 years old right now. If you really don't feel confident in these skills, you can do it. You can still learn them, okay? And just think about Barry as a 20-year-old kid. He had a lot to learn, but he soaked it all up. And because of that, he was able to go out on his own and be successful. So you can do it too, wherever you are in your life, all right? I also love Barry's other advice that it was like two sides of the same coin, right? He said, do what I did. And then he said, don't do what I did, (laughs) right? So all about preparing yourself through experiences to run a good, solid interior design firm. And he said, yes, take my advice in those areas. But what he said that he didn't do so well and he doesn't want you to fall into the same trap is not learning to delegate some of the work to others. All right. We've heard this advice before. We've heard the advice in this way. Focus on your superpower. Okay. You definitely should keep your finger on the pulse of all the other stuff, but you don't need to be knee deep into everything that it takes to run your firm. You can and you should let other people do it for you because other people have different superpowers for you. And when you recognize that, and I'm going to take the step before that, when you go look for it, right? We always say, be very clear what you do really well, what you really like to do, what you don't do so well, and what you don't really like to do. Divide those four lists up. And then you want to go find the people that are really good at the things that you're not good at and the people who like to do the things that you don't like to do. But when you do find them, then empower them to do their job. Train them well, treat them well, and empower them. And then that's when your business will flourish. And the results of that, you know, for one person, the result might be that they get more white space in their life. They get more time for recreational activities, for family, for friends, for children, whatever it is. For another person, it might create more space for you to grow your business and scale your business. So either way, it's very important to first know yourself, your strengths, your superpowers, and then hire outside of them, right? This is old, old news at this point, 700 plus episodes in, but it's good good advice. All right. So I would say, you know, definitely think about these, you know, insights that Barry shared with us. Um, Figure out what you need to make adjustments in your business. What ways did you, did you have an aha moment from this? And um, definitely go, you know, check out that collection at Kravit.com. So Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for showing up today. I am just thrilled that you do uh, show up with me. I appreciate Barry and uh, so much. And what we're going to have to have another episode and get Amanda on here because I think that would be interesting, right? To learn to learn how the succession planning went from the other side and how that, um, you know, what it's like to run. I can't even imagine, <laughs> but I'll bet there's some interesting things there. In the meantime, thanks tons for showing up. I really really do appreciate and value you decide to be excellent. Thank you so much for joining me again today. This podcast is a production of Window Works, your resource for custom window treatments and awnings. To learn how we can help you on your next interior design project, go to www.windowworks-nj.com. And if you're interested in working with me on your business, either through masterminds or one-on-one coaching, 
or you want to know how to get my book, The Making of a Well-Designed Business, or you just want to know what's going on in the podcast land and where I'm going to be, all of that is found at luannnigara.com. Thank you so much. Have an excellent day.